What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're going to take a look at the Didding 807. All right, so I am really excited about this grinder. This is something that I've really enjoyed for a long time. It's something that's littered in a lot of coffee roasteries and it's kind of a legendary grinder in its own right because of the history behind it. Didding, which is now owned by Hemro, Didding has been around for a long, long time. And their original iteration of this grinder was the 804, which I re briefly referenced in this video uh, that was released recently. But anyway, um, this uh, came out originally with cast burr, so cast steel, which gives you kind of like a medieval feel, right? It, the cast steel was kind of, was, um, I guess, invented in around 1750 as a way of, of, of making metal. And the burrs in it are made of this cast iron, this cast steel. So there's a lot less consistency when you're doing it that way, but it kind of, uh, it, it seems to give a, a really unique flavor profile. So nowadays we have these machined, like really tight nanometer type uh, tolerances. We have these DLC coatings, the TIN coatings, the titanium coatings. We have this laser precision, but these were cast, all right? So there's there's a lot more uh, inconsistency, I guess, in the batches, which can be kind of um, troublesome, but for the most part, they, they have been a legendary burr. So to a brief walk through history is the original Didding 804 came with these cast burrs, and I'm going to put a picture of it right here, okay? So that's what the original one looked like, and I want to thank the user on Home Barista um, for this picture. I have their credit, um, credit them down below. Um, but this is what they looked like, and then they transitioned, at least to my understanding, to this machined version right here, which I also found on Home Barista, so thank you to that user again credited below in the caption. And then, in, uh, it was like the early 2010s, uh, there was a group of people at Malkunig that had found these old Didding burrs and decided they wanted to re-machine them, or remake them, I should say. Uh, for the new Malkunig Peak that was coming out at the time. My friend Kyle, Ram Kyle Ramage was part of this team. and so. They found these burrs, they decided to make a little sharper cuts, a little deeper grooves, change a little bit about it, and this is what it ended up looking like. Now this is not, this is not the cast version, of course. This is a, uh, a coated version. I didn't want to have to take out the burr from inside of here, but this is a coated version of a machined, um, of a machined one of the, with the same geometry. So you have these unique ridges that are more oval-like, right? So that's what the, the cast one looks like. Okay. So... You have the, the implementation of them in the Malkunig Peaks and then the Diddings, they took them back. So they put them in the 804s in the future runs of them and now into the 807s that have been recently released. This, this grinder specifically right here is the Didding 807 filter. So this is not the lab suite. There are a few different, a few different styles of the 807s. This one is the filter. So under here, you can put kind of arms that will hold onto your filter basket so that you can, you can grind straight into your filter basket when brewing coffee in a coffee shop. Now, before continuing, I want to give a huge shout out, a big thank you to Prima Coffee out of Kentucky. They have loaned me this machine for, the, for, for me to use uh, to make a video, uh, for me to use it to make a video. And they actually let me keep it a lot longer than I should have because I've been doing a lot of travel. So thank you so much, Prima. Check them out. I'm going to put them in the caption below. I'll put a link to this as well if anyone's interested interested, you can check out the other iterations, like the Lab Suite, which is probably the most famous iteration. Anyway, thank you, Prima. So this one right here, and, and, and it's same with the, with the other ones, has this massive hopper on top, which, you know, might not be ideal for a lot of people who like to single dose. So when you take a look at it, I mean, this thing's big, all right? It's a big old, big old boy. And, um, Anyway, so I'm sure I'm sure you can find on Thingiverse and other places uh, 3D printed mods that people have done. You know, you're okay. You're okay. You're giving me great content. Here was the source of the bark. Sweet Onyx. Look at the little baby. Hi, buddy. Okay. All right. So. Huge hopper, and it's of course it's because it's made for like these cafes, these labs that are grinding in bulk, right? So it does a great. I, I actually had the opportunity to have this at my house for a while, and I've conducted many cuppings at home in order to uh, create water recipes, in order to you know compare and contrast this grinder with others, and so I've had a lot of great experience on how to use this for single dosing, for batch grinding, and all of that. Uh, obviously, it's not ideal 
for single dosing. That being said, the retention is actually shockingly low on this. After I put a lot of coffee in it, obviously coffee finds its way into nooks and crannies. But after that, I put in 20 grams, I'd get out 20 grams after you kind of, you see how the nozzle moves when you do this? It's got a little pad back here. Well, it's not really a pad, I guess that's a piece of metal. But it bangs against that. Oh, there is a pad on the back of this though. So there's a pad on the back of the spout right here and it knocks against a piece of metal on the back to knock out anything that might be stuck right here. But the machine itself, just to give you some of the nerdy details, this one is 500 watts, okay? 500 watts and 1700 RPM. Now this runs at about, at a medium grind size, 7.5 grams per second. Now if you go to the Didding Lab Suite, the difference there is it's a 700 watt motor as opposed to a 500 watt motor, and it goes nine grams per second, even though it's still 1700 RPM, it's because it's the stronger motor, right? So. Uh, they're, uh, everything else though is the same except for some of the exteriors. So you have a bigger, stronger motor on the Ditting Lab Suite that puts out the coffee just a little bit faster, but I mean, good grief, 7.5 uh, uh, grams per second is flying, okay? So that's kind of how this works. You have this massive anti-popcorn type thing, which is 100% necessary. If you put coffee in uh, and you leave it open, it honestly doesn't even catch it all. I have beans flying out if I'm cupping and like tossing and keeping it open. Uh, you'll have some beans flying out. So it's, it's worth it to shut it every time you put a dose in because that will happen. Um, it does have a great little safety feature. Uh, the, the grinder will not start unless this little metal clip on the back is pressed down. So I can turn it on and I cannot start it unless this little metal piece back here. We're going to be dangerous. Don't be like me, kids. Is pressed down. Once it's pressed down, we can start it pull it out, it's done. All right, so the way that's pressed is with this little guy right here. So of course you can make your own mod in order to put a single doser on and, and hack this in order so that it stays on for you. But honestly, this does a great job. The retention is really low and uh, yeah, I've been enjoying my time with it. And so the big questions are, how does it taste on filter? How does it taste on espresso? So. The, the little secret, in which I've already told you, but is that the Malkunik Peak, which was one of the most popular espresso grinders at coffee shops uh, until there, uh, there were some issues with it, but uh, the, the flavor of the coffee it was producing was next level. And so, and now you have the, the Malkunik E80 also does this, but they both had the peak or the Didding burrs inside of it. So we already know that the Didding burrs can create delicious espresso because they built a whole espresso machine around that the peak and now the E80. So if you enjoy, if you ever, if you've ever been to a coffee shop with one of those machines and you've loved the espresso, that was with these exact same burrs. So whenever you look on the side and we look at the dial, it actually has different, it's stepless and it has different ranges. So it goes all the way down to Turkish, to espresso, to Aeropress, which, what does that mean? Uh, I always hate Aeropress ranges because they're it's such a vastly, anyway, well, I don't want to digress. Pour over, filter, which, okay, uh, French press and then cold brew. So obviously you only have one big rotation here. So you're not having those minor changes that you can do on something like a Mazda or even like a Eureka where you can take tiny little, tiny little ticks. This one you have a range of say, um, from about, I don't know, from about here. If you kind of keep your eye right here, you have till about hmm, there. So you got about, I don't know, uh, a sixth of a slice of pie to work with espresso. Now that being said, you can, uh, this, is, this is held on really well. There absolutely is no drifting. So you can make tiny little movements like so, and it's, not, it's gonna hold its spot, all right? So this may, and also you may be thinking Turkish, I wonder how fine it can really run. Let me tell you, I went down to the coarsest setting of Turkish and I let a shot run for two minutes and didn't get a single drop out. It is truly truly fine and that was a few ticks off of chirp so let's see where i have chirp right now come on oh i turned it off i have chirp at i i'm dumb i have chirp at 1.5 whatever it, it bottoms out at, at one so i have it at 0.5 or 1.5 right there and at two is where I ground it, which is at the coarser end of Turkish, and it completely choked out my machine. So I couldn't even get espresso until about 2.5, which is where the espresso range 
begins. So this can get super fine. Makes really nice shots with really, really, uh, even with lightly roasted coffees, it gives it a really nice body. Now what's unique about this is it gives you a higher proportion of fine particles and a more narrow distribution of boulders. All right, so it gives you this, uh, this opportunity to have this really viscous, thick body without giving you a lot of that bitterness that might come along with it um, and, and a lot of that unevenness, that imbalanced uh, nature that can, be, again, that, can, that can come about from a lot of boulders being produced. So this gives you a, a really nice shot of espresso that is accentuating sweetness and accentuating body. Those are the two big terms that you need to kind of get in your head when you're thinking about the Ditting Lab Suite. Now that is not to say that it mutes the acidity. There is still a nice acidity punching through, but it is not kind of the marker of this. You're going to get more acidity, more clarity in an EK43 or like a Nova Simonelli Mythos, but this is going to give you comparable body to like the Mythos, maybe even a little bit more, and a heavier sweetness with still a little punch of that acidity to round it all out. So it gives really unique shots, and again, I, I brought them up earlier, but um, this was this was the project my friend Kyle Ramage was really excited about that he was he was able to be a part of was creating that Malkunig Peak, and he says some of the best espresso he's ever had has been made on peaks. Um, I can say something similar from shops that I've attended and now with that E80. I think it does a great job with espresso. Okay, so now we've kind of looked at the, we've looked at the text, the specs, we've looked at the features of it. It's obviously not a, a beautiful grinder. I mean, I guess if you like tall, skinny, you know, featureless grinders, then it's beautiful, but it's kind of bare bones, which, which I actually kind of like. You just have an on-off switch, you open it, close it. It's great for ca cafes, obviously, especially with this brewer attachment, which I don't have here, but it comes out. You can put uh, um, your filter, your fil filter in there for drip coffee, and then you just do that to lessen the retention. And again, it really is a low, low retention. I would say it's 0.1 to 0.2 grams whenever you're single dosing. As long as you give it a little pop to make sure all the beans go through, and a little pop right there in order to get all the coffee that might be stuck. So I'm gonna pull a shot of espresso real quick as we end this video, and uh, yeah, hold on. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the last thing I want to say about this is there's actually a big range of forgiveness because it's kind of more of a traditional style of coffee that's coming out of it. Because of that bigger distribution of fines, more narrow distribution of these boulders, you're gonna have a bigger window in order to extract something that's tasty. And this is something I've seen other users note is they could maybe pull a shot five seconds too short or six, seven, eight seconds too long, and it's gonna come out tasting really nice. It may not be that ideal target, that ideal zone, but you're gonna have a much wider window, kind of like a conical burr where it's gonna taste good. So these are like easier to dial in than maybe a more unimodal type of burr. This is absolutely not unimodal. And so anyway, I'm gonna continue drinking my espresso. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about the Dating 807, please hit me up below or reach out to Prima. Thank you again, Prima, for being awesome. Hit that like, the subscribe, check out my Patreon. Anyway, thank you so much. I really love all of you, and I hope you brew something tasty today. Cheers.